Hi, welcome to another video. So, we need to talk about the current state of AI coding models. If you've been on Twitter or Reddit lately, you've probably seen the hype cycle spinning out of control. Every other day, there is a new open source model dropping that claims to be the Claude Killer or the GPT Destroyer. It's getting to the point where the charts look like they're drawn by the marketing team rather than engineers. However, a new contender just dropped that actually caught my attention, not just because of the hype, but because of the architecture behind it. It's called iQuest Coder V1, specifically the 40B loop instruct version. Now, the team behind this is claiming some absolutely wild numbers. They are saying this 40 billion parameter model, which, let's be honest, is a mid-sized model in the grand scheme of things, is outperforming proprietary giants like Claude 4.5 Sonnet. But here is the problem. I've been testing it. And while I want to believe that we can run state-of-the-art logic on a couple of high-end GPUs, the reality is a bit more complicated. Today, I'm not going to do a live coding demo because honestly, you don't need to see me generate another snake game to understand what's happening here. Instead, I want to tear down the architecture of this model, explain why it's technically fascinating, and then explain why you shouldn't trust the benchmarks. We are going to talk about benchmaxing and why this model is the perfect example of it. First, let's look at how they built this thing, because it is legitimately cool. To understand iQuest Coder, you have to understand that most coding models are trained on static files. They scrape GitHub, they take a snapshot of a file, and they train the AI to predict the next token. It's like trying to learn how to write a novel by only reading the final printed pages, without ever seeing the rough drafts or the editor's notes. The iQuest team introduced something they call the code flow paradigm. Instead of just static code, they are training the model on the evolution of software. They are looking at the commit history, the diffs, and the transition from a buggy state to a fixed state. They even have this specific method called the Project Maturity Principle, where they only select commits from the 40% to 80% life cycle of a project. They basically ignore the messy start of a project and the stagnant end of a project to focus on the peak development phase. That is actually a very smart way to filter data. But it doesn't just stop there. The real innovation here, and the reason they call it the loop model, is the architecture. It's called loop coder. In a traditional transformer model, the data goes in one end, passes through all the layers once, and comes out the other. It's a straight line. iQuest Coder does something different. It uses a recurrent structure. It basically runs the input through the transformer blocks, but it does it in two fixed iterations. Think of it like this. When you read a complex piece of code, you rarely understand it on the first read-through. You read it, you get the gist, and then you read it again to understand the logic. That is essentially what this model is doing structurally. In the second loop, it combines global attention, looking at everything, with local attention to refine its understanding. This allows them to effectively double the depth of the reasoning without doubling the number of parameters stored in VRAM. It's an efficiency hack that supposedly boosts logical reasoning. They also split the post-training into two paths. They have an instruct path, which is your standard chatbot style, and a thinking path, similar to OpenAI's O1, where the model uses reinforcement learning to generate internal reasoning traces before giving you the answer. So, on paper, this sounds incredible. You have a model that learns from the flow of code changes reads the code twice via the loop architecture, 
and has specialized training for reasoning. And if you look at the technical report, the numbers are astronomical. They show it scoring an 81.4 on SWE Bench Verified. For context, that is territory usually reserved for massive proprietary models. They show it beating practically everything on Live Code Bench. If you took these charts at face value, you'd cancel your Claude subscription immediately and just run this locally. But, and this is a massive but, we need to talk about benchmaxing. I spent the sum hours using iQuest Coder V1 for actual development tasks, building a small Next.js dashboard, debugging some Python scripts, and refactoring a messy backend. And here's where it gets interesting. The feeling of the model does not match the benchmarks. When a model scores that high on SWE bench, you expect it to handle ambiguity perfectly. You expect it to understand when I say, fix the button. I implied the button on the navbar, not the footer. But iQuest coder feels rigid. It feels like a student who memorized the textbook, but struggles when the test question is phrased slightly differently. This is what we call benchmaxing. It's the AI equivalent of teaching to the test. If you read the fine print in their report, you see that they heavily utilized competitive programming data and reasoning QA in their mid-training stage. They used massive amounts of synthetic data generated by frontier models to teach it how to solve hard logic puzzles. Here is the thing about benchmarks like human evil or MBPP. They are essentially leet code problems. If you train a model on millions of leet code examples, it is going to destroy those benchmarks. It will look like a genius. But software engineering is not leet code. Software engineering is connecting a messy API to a poorly documented library while dealing with a legacy code base that hasn't been updated in three years. When I asked iQuest Coder to solve isolated algorithmic problems, it was brilliant. In literal seconds, it gave me optimized Python solutions that were cleaner than what I would write. The thinking model, specifically, is very good at self-correction on these types of math-heavy or logic-heavy puzzles. However, when I threw it into a real-world scenario, like, here is a context of 10 files, figure out why the state isn't persisting in supabase, it struggled. It lost the thread. It started hallucinating imports that didn't exist. It didn't feel like an 81.4 on SWE bench. It felt like a really good 40B model, but certainly not a clod killer. The issue is that the loop architecture, while clever, seems to be optimizing for the type of reasoning found in these tests. The recurrent mechanism helps it double-check its logic, which is great for a math problem where there is one right answer. But in creative coding or architectural design, that double-check doesn't always translate to better intuition. Also, we have to talk about contamination. The report talks about aggressive decontamination to remove benchmark questions from the training set. And I believe them. They probably removed the exact questions. But if you train on 10,000 problems that share the same structure and logic as the benchmark, the model effectively learns the pattern of the benchmark. It's complying with the letter of the law, but violating the spirit. This is kind of awesome technology, don't get me wrong. The fact that a 40 billion parameter model is even in the conversation with 3.5 sonnet is a testament to how good open weights are getting. The loop architecture is a genuine innovation that I hope other labs adopt because running a 40B model on two consumer GPUs is pretty affordable compared to renting a massive cluster. But we have to stop treating benchmarks as the gospel truth. When a model claims it beats the world leaders, you have to ask, 
Does it beat them at coding, or does it beat them at taking tests? In the case of iQuest Coder V1, it is a fantastic tool if you need a local assistant for snippets, algorithms, and specific logic tasks. It is significantly better than the Llama 370 billion coding variants, in my opinion, for pure logic. But it lacks the world model understanding that makes the proprietary giants feel so smart. It doesn't get the intent behind your code, as well as the models that are trained on a wider breadth of messy human data. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.